traders, uh, this was a good day for me and I'm done. As you can see, I'm up $18,000. There's still a few hundreds open in my open trades. Uh, it's a quite a rare occasion where I've got um, three winners only, FSLR, SQ and Tesla and four losers. When you usually have uh, three winners and four losers, I would personally usually be in red territory. That means I managed my trades correctly. As you can see, my winners are bigger than my losers. I want to talk a little bit about that and of two small issues that I would like to discuss today. So the first uh, trade was really Tesla and the first trade was short which failed. If you take a look at Tesla that was the right thing to do. I mean Tesla started down I think 6% or so and then the right thing to do is to expect a gap and go. But the market did not think so and the market was in effect moving higher right from the start. As you can see first move up that was the point where it should have uh, had the chance to come down. It did not. It continued higher. Quite a rare occasion with the market starting with a big gap down and actually moving in the direction of closing the gap. Usually it fades and comes down. Well, the game is not over yet. It could still do that. And I would in fact give it more. I would say it's more likely for the market to come down than to continue higher. But so far I'm wrong. I mean, it does continue higher. At that point, the market could have come down. It did not. And Tesla came up with the market. Now, this, the second thing I've done with Tesla was uh, going long over 420, which is right over here. And that worked out fine. As you can see, that was a much bigger winner than my first loser. And that's why I'm very nicely green in Tesla. So Tesla worked out fine. What I do like to talk about is uh, FSLR. FSLR trade, as you can see here, um, I mean, the stock came down very nicely, then pulled up with the market and I was like looking for a chance to short it, which did come. And once I shorted the stock somewhere around here, it went sideways for a long while and then finally came down where the market was looking like it's about to fail. It was also the point where we took our partial in SQ. So that was my uh, second biggest winner today, SQ. But I don't really want to talk about what happened in FSLR. I mean, it was the right thing to do with the trend. And of course, it worked out, took the partial at the right time. I, I still actually have 100 shares, which are not doing that great. But anyway, uh, Tesla trade uh, worked out nicely, but I do not want to discuss that. I want to discuss the daily of Tesla. Take a look at the daily of Tesla. What's interesting about the daily of Tesla, here's what we had today, okay? That particular day today is the day where FSLR came down and closed the gap from the beginning of August. So take a look at what happened here. FSLR had a big gap up. Now what happens when a stock is having a big gap up? Usually it will come down and close the gap. That's a rule that uh, if you're an experienced trader, you know and you wait for it to happen. So as you can see, it tried twice here to close the gap, it failed, but finally it closed the gap today. When you leave a big gap on the daily, it's, I mean, 90% of the gaps will get closed. It may not happen the same day, but it's definitely going to happen in a few weeks or sometimes in a few months or sometimes even much more than that. But you wait for the gap to close. You know, the thing is about gaps, that gaps are in fact a point of no trading. They are like a vacuum and the vacuum like that draws in the price. When the stock was here, I'm talking about what happened uh, in the beginning of August here at 64.50 and then opened at uh, 69 something. I mean, this big gap up that you're seeing here is like a vacuum. That means it was not traded. People did not buy. People did not uh, sell. People did not short. When you have a stock moving up, there are, of course, buyers. But for every buyer, there's also a seller. Don't forget that. There's more buyers than for the prices going up, but there's a seller for every buyer. And there's not only sellers, there are also short sellers. That is when the stock is trading through the price. But what you're seeing here is the fact that the stock was gapping up, so there's no short sellers. Now, why is that a vacuum? Because if there's no short sellers, there are no disappointed short sellers. You know, if the first stock was moving higher, and there were short sellers, as there usually are, they would be extremely disappointed because the stock would have moved higher. Just imagine it was trading through that price. There's buyers, there's sellers, there's short sellers. And the short sellers would not move out when the stock is moving higher. They're usually waiting like everybody's waiting. I mean, it's a big mistake, but that's what people do, especially if they are 
investing kind of short sellers, okay? I'm talking about the long range here. They would wait until the price comes down where they could move out at the price where they shorted. A person does not like to lose. And the thing is that these always investors are always waiting for the price to come back down. So if you were a short seller and the price come would have came down through this price, let's say it was traded in, then you would probably be buying, meaning closing your short. Since there's a gap here, there were no short sellers, no short sellers, that means no disappointed short sellers. No disappointed short sellers means no support. When the price comes down, there's nobody who's buying the stock. I mean, those who are disappointed short sellers, which could be a big support. So anyway, a gap is a very big uh, vacuum which draws in the price. That's why at the point where it closed the gap, it bounced up. That's the point where we took the partial really. So the point where it closed the gap is a point of support. Don't forget that. I could go back to another trade. I mean, we had a good trade today in SQ and look at the same thing that happened in SQ. Again, a big gap up in the beginning of August and then it came down and closed the gap. Gaps usually get closed rather easily because again, there's no disappointed short sellers. That means if the price comes down, it usually would close the gap more easily. But at the point where the gap is closed, you need to remember that that's the point of support. And look at here as well, the point of support, this previous point over here. So that would be a point of support again, very much because of the uh, gap. There's also other reasons if you look back, but um, that's a very important thing to notice when you watch a trade and you're thinking whether you're going to get support or not, watch at previous gaps um, and, and wait for them to the point where they get closed. And usually that would be the point of support. So just one thing that uh, happened today that I thought uh, it should be uh, discussed. Uh, that's it. Uh, I have been away for uh, two days and I'm nicely compensated for these two days that I missed. So I'm expecting to trade tomorrow and I'm expecting uh, and hoping to see you all there. So thank you very much for being with us today. If you're on YouTube, if you don't mind giving us a thumb up right now, small click of, the, of your mouse, uh, that would be appreciated. Thank you all for following. Thank you all for trading with us and um, see you all tomorrow. Bye traders. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14 day trial. Traded has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004 and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.